great practical uh, advice there and I, I guess certainly I've been to the hospitals many years and we, we don't always get those nutrition and exercise uh, elements it's something we really got to share as patient organizations to uh, um, make that part of people's uh, you know recovery of the disease or day-to-day -day activities and certainly it was great to hear that the red wine every night was still okay <laughs> Okay, so just going to check which is the button on this and how to wrong way. Oh, this guy, the, 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 the big green button in the middle. Thank you, Jean Christophe. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to sing Barbara now because you've said that. Okay, then, I am David Gregory. I'm the Secretary of the Amyloidosis Alliance and Secretary of the Amyloidosis UK. I am a patient with hereditary ATTR amyloidosis and was diagnosed about six years ago. I am at an early stage uh, of the disease, having um, my sister having been picked up with it. My sister passed away with it um, several years ago. Uh, my brother is at an advanced stage with it as well. So I do consider myself very fortunate that the latest treatments are available are there for me. Uh, unlike previous family uh, members. So a little bit of repeat things in here from yours, John Christoph, but I'm going to try and go into a little bit more depth because you might have forgotten some of those uh, elements. So I'm going to talk about the role of the Amyloidosis Alliance and uh, a bit about patient and caregiver organisations. Uh, the target of this talk is to those delegates that are new to what the Amyloidosis Alliance is about. It's not something for people that are established, uh, um, so you, you, know, you don't have to have lots of questions because you know some of these uh, elements. I'm also going to share some of the target areas that the Amyloid Alliance wants to work uh, on in the years to come. So, as it's already been said, the Amyloid uh, Alliance is an organisation to dedicated patient associations throughout the world. It is based in France and it is a registered charity uh, with, with controls and structures based in that country. Our members are patients suffering from all amyloidosis, all types. Uh, are represented. It's fair to say, as was said this morning, originally the A was started as a hereditary organisation and, and as we've matured now, we now want to support all types. Uh, as we know, we actually have the same types of challenges. I'm here today, actually, the two days is to learn more about AL and uh, that's something I've already done uh, this morning. Uh, in, my, uh, in the UK, we go to the Amyloidosis Centre um, regularly, uh, and, and then uh, last time I went, I didn't realise it. I was supposed to see ATTR, but it was actually AL um, patients, and I thought, oh, I don't want to speak to, because they're different, um, and quite rightly, I didn't think that, and I had uh, great uh, interaction, and that's when you realise, actually, we're all going through the same challenge um, in managing this uh, disease. Um, so, you know, I'm really pleased as an organisation we're focused on bringing everybody uh, together. Um, our role is not to tell you how to manage your organ organisation. Uh, it is uh, to provide additional resource, exposure and share best practice by meeting together be it on video conferences, which we all had to do since uh, the dreaded uh, C word. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to share be best practice with that and conferences like this. And it's great to be back together um, to do that. Another key target is to grow the amount of countries that are part of the organization. Where possible, we encourage established members, countries that have been doing it for a, while, a lot longer, to uh, support other countries based on language or geography. You know, it's great that Belgium uh, has been able to set up their organisation in quite a short time, actually. So well done for that. I know it's been a real, yay. It's been a real challenge. We were talking at dinner, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so a real challenge uh, with few resources and few people, I 
guess that sounds uh, familiar. So well done uh, to Belgium and thank you for letting us come here um, in this next couple of days. Certainly Agnes, Agnes rather, I can say it wrong sometimes, don't I? Is uh, working on two more countries at the moment uh, to join the alliance and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what that looks like uh, soon. You saw this map earlier. Uh, we want to help raise um, health authorities and public awareness of this disease. And as we've already know, it's a big challenge to be diagnosed. We want to share initiatives that support the patient's journey and help access treatments. We know there are more treatments available and we want to have a voice in communicating this change. At this moment in time, there's more trials coming down, <laughs> which is quite, uh, quite exciting. So be it the patient voice globally, we want to be uh, that to all stakeholders, so that includes patients, families, caregivers, health authorities, governments, let's not forget them, and of course, pharma companies. At ISA uh, conference, John Christophe, you did a, a talk um, about what's going on, and it's really uh, quite something that the Amyloid Alliance is, the organization that's focusing on helping countries throughout the world. Let me go a bit forward. So uh, we've already talked a, a few about this World Amyloidosis Day is really uh, something. We're on our third or fourth now, Agnes, is it? And um, it's something that is a success, so we're continuing that. The uh, material and particularly the video com uh, content is getting, I think it was 800,000 hits over a period of time. So that shows how important globally that is. We've talked about the scientific uh, committee and we've also, that's predominantly the TTR one, but we've also got an AL one that has got a different set of uh, people uh, within that as well. We do provide um, uh, online support uh, with regards to setting up uh, websites and um, social media, uh, but we also give physical support still with leaflets because we, we know some of our patients are of a certain age so we don't want to forget those um, within that going forward as well. We went to the ISA conference in Rochester only two months ago and um, this conference was uh, at the Mayo Clinic. There was over a thousand delegates there which was the biggest one ever. Pharma was there with the information about the treatments uh, there is a big focus on this disease currently and as said previously we need to engage that opportunity um, you know it's certainly something I spoke to it was actually Julian I spoke to and he said 12 years ago he'd go to the first conferences and there'd be a hundred people there with two pharma um, uh, little bits in the corner um, saying about it so that just shows you the major change in this landscape um, you know, especially for a disease that is rare, but we know with all the different types, it's actually becoming not so rare. So I think we need to, uh, as people get more diagnosed, I think that landscape will change. Okay, I won't go through that one. So raising awareness of the caregiver, I wanted to mention this because we had a really powerful uh, communication by uh, three uh, um, patients back in Madrid Congress. They provided a, a real compelling story about the journey that they're going through. And uh, it's something um, that we kind of forget a little bit uh, within this uh, journey because sometimes we focus on the patient, which is right, but we kind of forget that group of, of people. A future objective is to raise the profile of the caregiver. Caregivers are often not taken into account as they quite, uh, they, you, know, you know, sometimes they become more ill than the patient um, that they're looking after. And that is, uh, that is something that uh, came across quite strongly. And uh, I guess doctors do not always see the challenges and their needs because they're so focused on the patient. You know, as the, the, the caregiver needs more support from patient organisations and the conversation needs to be heightened. 
in uh, uh, 2025 when we do the Milan conference. One of our uh, targets uh, is to raise that and particularly in the Doxers channel because they're, you know, they're all downstairs talking about us and all this sort of thing, but they don't always hear from the patient and certainly not the caregiver. So we're going to make a commitment to uh, hire the profile in that particular area. Okay, so some of the priorities uh, of the Amyloid Alliance. Uh, we've got some clear opportunities to make a difference. We want to continue the success of the Amyloidosis Day every year. We've got a really good established agency that does that for us. You might have seen a chap going around videoing you, so watch out on the 26th of October. You might uh, pop up on that. We want to encourage and integrate all types of amyloidosis diseases um, be it AL, AA, wild type, heredity or localised, you know, we are all one family. We're going to uh, develop a international survey on amyloidosis, uh, independent of pharma companies. This is at an early stage, but and we think it's going to add value. So we're going to get as many countries as possible to be uh, involved with that, with that. I've said we want to raise caregivers I mentioned that uh, as an important way forward. Uh, we want to continue to uh, support bringing in me membership of new countries and grow membership. We want to influence pharma. You know, pharma needs to support countries with limited treatments. And again, that at Rochester was a big subject. It took over, you know, one of our main sessions. And we want to put in some practical steps to support this. Some farmer talk positively about this but are slower at putting anything in place. The next ISA conference in 2026 is in Uruguay. You know that is a continent that has significant uh, challenges and we want to get some practical things in there that will support them. Uh, the uh, the ATTR Milan conference that's a, a really good stage as well. Um, that's and then perhaps the second one after this, this is a success and you give us great feedback then we'd aim to do another one and then in the future I guess we look at amalgamating it you know that's the sort of uh, way forward uh, with that if we're serious about looking at it as a uh, total uh, one uh, disease uh, organization so there's much to do and with the support of patient organisations, we can really make that happen. So thank you for listening. And uh, <laughs> yeah, got some questions.